Hello everyone, welcome to Food Microbiology Lecture Series. My name is Shiv Prasad, I am an Assistant Professor at Department of Food Technology, Vignans Foundation for Science, Technology and Research. So in today's lecture, we will be having a discussion on one of the important concept from Unit 2 of Food Spoilage, that is the classification of the food based on its shelf life and the contamination of the food by variety of sources. So by the end of this particular lecture, so the students will be able to classify any given food product based on its shelf life and also students will be able to thoroughly understand what are all the different possible sources of contamination as far as food is concerned. Okay? So let us now have an understanding what exactly food spoilage actually means. So when I say food spoilage, so the food spoilage can be defined as any kind of a physical, chemical or biological changes which is in turn rendering a food product unfit for human consumption. Okay? So when I say chemical type of changes or chemical type of spoilages, so it means different compartments or components in food reacts with each other or with some other added products. Okay, so if what are all the components that is existing in food, if there is an interaction between any two distinct components, then in turn it is resulting in specific kind of change that is regarded as chemical change. To give you an example herein, I have given you a picture of an cut apple. Okay, so the apple will in turn turn to brown. So why exactly this is happening? It is exclusively because of the chemical change that is brought in. Okay, so there is a specific enzyme called as polyphenol oxidase which we effectively abbreviate as PPO that is nothing but polyphenol oxidase. Okay, so this is the enzyme which is responsible to bring in specific kind of a color change with respect to apple. Okay, so similar kind of color change is effectively observed in case of bananas as well which turn brown. Okay, so this is significantly because of the chemical change that is brought in by a specific kind of an enzyme that is polyphenol oxidase. So this is about the chemical change. So whenever we are talking about microbiological or biological change, it is effectively by the growth of microorganism. So the microorganism has an ability to produce variety of enzymes like to give you an example, the microorganism can actually produce lipase okay, and also protease. Okay, so these are the enzymes which are produced by microorganism. So microorganism, whenever they produce this, they the lipase will effectively render the food product and causes lipolysis. That is breakage of fruit fat. Okay, so similarly the protease will render the food to undergo proteolysis. Okay, so whenever, an, an, whenever the enzymes are being produced by microorganism, they can in turn result in some kind of a biological changes in case of your food product. Okay, so herein I have given you an example of a carrot which has underwent soft rot. Okay, so the bacterial soft rot. So this particular disease in case of carrot is caused by Ervinia carotovora. Okay, so the Ervinia is the genus name. Okay. Okay, so Ervinia carotovora is the responsible bacteria for having this bacterial soft rot. Okay? So that is about the biological or microbiological changes. Okay? So the next thing we have physical type of changes. So whenever I say physical type of changes, it is the damages that the fruits or vegetable has underwent okay? during harvesting, processing as well as distribution. So during any of these particular unit operation, if the fruits or vegetable or any kind of a food product has suffered any kind of an injury or physical damage, then it can be classified as physical changes. So what exactly happens here is, in case of this particular fruit, as you can effectively see, so there is a physical distortion, that is a physical damage which can be effectively seen. Okay, so this physical damage will effectively gives a way 
for the microorganism to act. So the microorganism, what they do? They effectively seek a shelter and goes inside the food products and brings about all the possible changes in turn rendering the food product to be spoiled. Okay. So to give you an overview, the spoilage of food product can be defined as the specific kinds of changes towards chemical, microbiological or physical which is in turn rendering the food product to be not fit for consumption okay so that is about the spoilage so taking this as a background now let us classify the food product based on its shelf life if whenever i say shelf life it is the keeping quality of the food product so taking into consideration keeping quality so how can we actually classify the food product so the food product taking shelf life into criteria can be classified into three distinct types that is perishable semi-perishable as well as non-perishable food product. To give you an example, we have fruits, vegetables, milk as well as meat which fall under the category of perishable food product while bread as well as cake will fall under the category of semi-perishable food product while nuts, cereals as well as your variety of flours like rice flour, ragi flour, wheat flour. So they are considered as non-perishable food product. So this particular classification is exclusively based on the available moisture content. Okay, so the moisture content plays a significant role in determining the shelf life of a food product. To give you an example, the vegetables, fruits, milk as well as meat have considerably higher amount of moisture content in comparison to the bread as well as the semi-perishable variety of food products. Okay, So if the moisture content is more, the proliferation of the microorganism will be more. Okay, And if the moisture content is less, the proliferation of microorganism will be less comparatively. Okay, So taking moisture content as into consideration, this particular classification has been given. Okay. So the shortest shelf life product are highly susceptible to spoilage and in turn they may render the food product to be hazard. That means it can bring about, the microorganism can bring about any kind of an undesirable changes and in turn it can make the food unsafe for human consumption. Okay. So to understand how exactly the microorganism will seek an entrance to any of this particular product in turn rendering or causing a spoilage. So we will have to understand the different sources of contamination. Okay, So let us now understand what are all the possible sources of contamination through which a food product can be contaminated. Okay, So whenever we are talking about contamination, it effectively happens from the natural sources of contamination. So there are various natural sources which can in turn render the food product to be contaminated. So the first thing we have from the green plants as well as fruits. Okay, So the fruits, the vegetables or any kind of a green leafy vegetables might actually have a natural microflora. So this is in turn dependent on what is the environment in which these particular fruits, vegetables or the green leafy vegetables are actually grown. So if the environmental environment in which such kind of products are grown, it is means that there is a possible sources of contamination. Okay, So the green plants as well as fruits and vegetables can be a potential carrier of microorganism also. So next thing we have animals. So the animals, the, specifically the meat animals like chicken that is poultry and the sheep, goat as well as cattle which are mostly used for consumption. So they can also be a potential carrier of microorganism. Okay, So that is the reason why effective grooming has to be in practice so that we can take care of any possible contamination occurring from the animal. Okay. So the third end we have from the sewage. So as we are aware, so the domestic sewage is mostly led to the water, that is the natural water bodies. Okay. So if such kind of water bodies are effectively used for cultivation of the crops, so if the sewage water is let into the natural water sources and in turn such kind of water or if the sewage water itself is being used, then it can actually contain the intestinal microflora. So the intestinal microflora might in turn contaminate the food product. Okay, So 
the sewage can also be a potential source of contamination of the food products. So the next thing we have soil. So as we are aware, so most of the root products like the carrot, beetroot, onion, okay, so require or in close contact with the soil. So if by any chance the night soil which is used as a fertilizer in most of the countries, okay, so there is still in practice that the night soil is nothing but So night soil is nothing but human waste, human feces, okay, so which is effectively used as a fertilizer in most of the countries, okay, which is still in practice. So as we are aware, so the night soil effectively consists of a numerous number of intestinal microflora, which in turn might contaminate your food matrix or the food products, okay. So next thing we have water. So water can also be a potential source of contamination if it is not properly chlorinated and if it is having any kind of a you know undesirable microorganism it in turn might contaminate the product okay so water can be also a potential carrier of microorganism in turn it can contaminate the food matrix also okay so next is the air so air is also can be a potential source of contamination so as far as air is concerned so air naturally do not inherit any kind of a microorganism but the dust particles and the environment in which the food product is being stored so it is can be a possible source of contamination because the dust particle can also contain a specific kind of microorganism so if that particular dust particle is landing onto any of the raw material or fruits or vegetables or the food product it in turn contaminates the food product okay so air can also be a possible source of contamination so next then how exactly the food product is being handled so the handling of the food product and the processing of the food product will also significantly contribute and act as a source of contamination as well okay so if the ghp as well as gmp is not sufficiently in place so when i say ghp it is nothing but it is good hygienic practices okay good hygienic practices has to be in place okay so if good hygienic practices and good manufacturing practices are in place then effectively we can avoid all the possible sources of contamination from handling as well as processing of a food product so these are the potential sources of food contaminants okay so through which the it is rendering the food product for undergoing spoilage okay so next then let us have an understanding in detail how exactly the green plants as well as the fruits can be a potential source of contaminants so as i've already told you whenever we are talking about a natural food product so they can or they are having a potential natural microflora so these potential natural microflora which is present on the surface of either the fruit vegetable or the green leafy vegetable includes the pseudomonas, alkali genes, flavobacterium, micrococcus, coliforms as well as lactic acid bacteria. So how exactly these type of bacteria can be taken care? It has to be subjected for proper washing. So the proper washing will effectively reduce the load of microorganism on the surface of which is present on the surface. Okay, so that has to be effectively in place. Okay. So the number of bacteria or number of microorganism that is present on the surface of the raw materials will depend on how exactly they are being kept that is environmental is a factor. So how exactly they are being grown and how exactly they are being stored. Okay, so these are the important environmental factor which effectively defines what is the range or the amount of microorganism load that might be present in your raw material that is your green plants as well as fruits okay so the number can vary anywhere between few hundreds per square meter to millions so it can be few hundreds to millions so that is the amount of load that might be actually present on the surface of your food matrix specifically the raw material such as like your fruits vegetables as well as green plants so effective washing has to be in place so that we can decrease the load of microorganism
okay. So to give you an example, I have quoted few examples here. So the surface of the well washed tomato will has 400 to 700 microorganism per centimeter. So even if you are washing your tomato effectively, so the surface which is being cultured and then subjected for microbial analysis has determined that the surface of the well washed tomato also contain 400 to 700 microorganism per square centimeter and also the second example that I have quoted here is the outer tissue of unwashed cabbage also contains 1 million to 2 million number of microorganisms. So that is the load. You can have a comparison between the same. Okay. So if the product is unwashed, the microorganism load will be effectively more in comparison to the washed food product which has effectively lower amount of microorganisms. So that is the reason why it is always advisable that prior to the consumption of any of the raw fruits, vegetables or the green plants, it has to be effectively subjected for washing. Okay, So washing will effectively reduce the microorganism load. So the possible other potential sources of contamination for fruits, vegetables as well as the green plants can be from the soil in which they are growing and the water if the water that is the sewage water is being used and the air in which the, the environment in which the product is being stored and also the animals. So if the animals is anywhere in the place so that it can always lead to the cross contamination. So this is about the green plants as well as the fruits as a potential source of contaminants. Okay, so the next thing we have another potential source of contamination that is animal. So how exactly animal can be a source of contamination of food product. So when I say animals, so the sources of microorganism in case of animal can come from the surface flora. Okay, so the surface of the animal that is the skin can be a potential carrier of microorganism and also the respiratory tract. Okay, so if the animal is suffering from any kind of a potential disease such as like tuberculosis. Okay, so tuberculosis, it is an respiratory tract infection and other flora of gastrointestinal tract that is GIT. Okay, so GIT tract can also be a potential source of contamination. So specifically when we are talking about animal as a source of contamination. So in case of animal, it can come from the surface flora that is nothing but the skin. And the second one is the respiratory tract. And the third one is the intestinal microflora. So the intestinal microflora effectively when we are discussing, it is of utmost priority that we discuss about coliforms. Okay, so the coliforms are the group of microorganisms which are gram negative and they are facultative anaerobe. Okay, so when I say it is facultative anaerobe, it means it can grow both in the presence as well as absence of oxygen. Okay, so the GIT tract effectively has coliforms. So this particular coliforms has effectively four potential microorganism. So these microorganism includes E. coli which is nothing but Eustachia coli and Klebsiella okay and also Enterobacter and Citrobacter. Okay, so these are the potential four important microorganisms or bacteria which fall under this coliform group. Okay, so in of which the important one is Eustachia coli because this Eustachia coli presence in any of the food matrix will indicate fecal contamination. So that means the presence of Eustachia coli in case of any of the food matrix will indicate that the product has been contaminated with the feces. Okay. So besides this coliform, the GIT tract of any kind of an animal might also have Salmonella, Shigella as well as Listeria. So these are the potential foodborne pathogens 
okay so which in turn can contaminate and cause variety of disease whenever they are being consumed okay so that is about the important sources of microorganism as far as animal is concerned okay so besides these potential sources the other kinds of contamination can also come from heights okay so the hoofs okay and also the hair of an microorganism hair of an animal hair of an animal and the soil the manure that is being fed to the animal and also the feed water so these all can be a potential source of spoilage causing microorganism as far as meat animal is concerned okay so besides that when we are talking potentially about poultry that is your chicken okay so the feathers as well as the feet so the feathers and the feet of a poultry is the hip whenever we are talking about poultry okay so necessarily the feathers as well as the feet induces heavy contamination of microorganism okay so as far as the chicken is concerned so it has natural microflora that is salmonella okay so salmonella in turn induces salmonellosis so there are different species of salmonella which causes different or variety of diseases like salmonella typhi causes salmonella typhoid salmonella para typhi causes para typhoid so depending on what species it is it is causing a heavy contamination of microorganism okay so with for the food product okay so the skin of many meat animals might contain micrococi staphylococci beta hemolytic streptococci so these are the potential microorganism which might be present on the surface of the meat animals okay so following which we have another important thing that has to be considered so whenever we are effectively want to reduce the number of microorganism load from the meat animals so we will have to ensure that there is an effective animal husbandry practice that means there is, there has to be proper grooming of an animal proper washing of an animal when all of this practices are effectively in place we can potentially reduce the number of spoilage causing as well as pathogenic microorganism coming from this particular meat animals okay so that has to be importantly taken into consideration okay so the type of microflora which might be coming from the animal as a source includes the skin microflora so the skin microflora potentially includes the staphylococci micrococci as well as corini bacteria and the respiratory microflora includes staphylococci streptococci as well as mycobacterium and also intestinal microflora includes coliforms bifidobacter salmonella so these are the potential sources from the or the potential type of microflora these are the potential type of microflora from the from these are the potential source of microflora from animals okay so this is the important importance of meat animal as an effective source of contamination okay so next then we have another important source that is the sewage so the sewage water so how exactly the domestic sewage from the household if it is left to the natural environmental bodies like the ponds rivers and everything so how exactly it is contaminating the food matrix okay so let us have an understanding on the same okay so the untreated domestic water can be a potential source of contamination because they if they are being used as a to to fertilize different plants as well as the different crops because the domestic untreated sewage might has intestinal pathogens so the <clears throat> the in turn the product which is cultivated from using the domestic sewage might actually be a carrier of potential microflora so specifically the intestinal microorganism so when i say intestinal microorganism that is the microorganism from the gi tract okay so gi tract that is coliforms and everything so they can be found in case of the product which has been cultivated utilizing untreated domestic water as a source of water all right 
So the use of night soil, so as I've already told you, the night soil is being used as a effective mean of fertilizer in most of the countries. So if it is being used, then there is always a possibility of transmission of intestinal microflora to your final product, okay? So and hence it has to be significantly reduced. That is the use of night soil as a potential source of fertilizer for the cultivation of variety of food products okay so the natural water contaminated with sewage water so as i've already told you if the untreated domestic water is left to natural water bodies that is the untreated domestic sewage water is let into natural water bodies like lakes ponds rivers and in such cases if these sources which have been already contaminated are effectively used as a source for the cultivation of the crops so the in turn they can also impart a specific contamination to your food matrix okay so the food product will be in turn contaminated and also the seafoods okay so the seafoods which includes the shellfishes the fishes as also so they will be in turn contaminated so it is not advisable that the untreated domestic water should be released to the natural water ponds because in turn everything the cycle of the food chain will be contaminated okay so to give you an example i have included the load of microorganism that is present so the untreated domestic sewage which is regarded as a raw sewage which is untreated so it has somewhere around 10 to the power of 9 cfu per ml of microorganism so if we are analyzing the raw sewage that is domestic sewage 1 ml of it so we can determine or we can enumerate 10 to the power of 9 cfu that is colony forming units okay so cfu stand for colony forming units okay so 10 to the power of 9 cfu per ml of microorganism can be effectively enumerated whenever we are subjecting rack, uh, raw sewage for microbial analysis so similarly the effluent sewage which has been treated okay so after effluent treatment so if we are determining the enumerating the load of microorganism it has somewhere around 10 to the power of 6 cfu per ml okay so you can determine what is the decrease in the load of microorganism in comparison between the raw sewage as well as the effluent sewage that has been treated okay so that is the reason why it is always advisable that there has to be proper effluent treatment before it is left or before it is being utilized for any other purpose okay so the sewage water which has been effluent sewage is only advisable for usage of the gardening purpose okay so next potential source of contamination that we will be talking is the soil so the soil can also be a potential source of carrier of microorganism okay so naturally there is variety of microorganism that is present in case of soil okay so if we are growing a specific kind of a fruits or vegetable so which are in direct contact with the soil then there is a possible transmission of microorganism to the surface of the food product okay so the soil dust so as we are already aware so the soil dust which is in the air might actually be a potential carrier of microorganism as well okay so if we are having a swift of wind which is in turn carrying the dust particle from the ground to the air so that can land onto any other kind of food matrix in turn it can be contaminated okay so the spore forming bacteria are mostly present in case of soil which effectively includes bacillus as well as clostridium okay so the bacillus as well as clostridium are the spore forming bacteria which can be a potential source as far as soil is concerned okay so type and number of microorganism vary with the soil and in its environment so if the sewage water is added so the intestinal microflora can be effectively enumerated from the soil so they can be also a potential source of intestinal microflora okay so as we can already see in here if the plant is being grown 
in a place which is having a decomposed body okay so herein you can see there is a decomposed body okay so if plant is grown anywhere near them so they can be a potential source of saprophytes so as i've already told you saprophytes are the class of microorganism which can effectively utilize the dead and decaying micro or decaying body so they will use the dead and decaying as an organic matter and effectively use it as a source of energy so saprophytes will be effectively seen uh, in the uh, in the fruits or vegetables or any kind of a raw material or the raw food product which is grown near to the decomposed um, body okay so the another important thing that has to be effectively taken into consideration are so these are the class of microorganism like acinetobacter alkali genes bacillus pseudomonas as well as micrococcus which can be potential source of contamination because they are naturally present in case of soil okay and hence they can be carried towards your uh, fruits or vegetables and in turn it might bring about any kind of an undesirable change okay so that is about the soil as a potential source of contaminant as far as the food matrix is concerned so the next potential source of contaminant can be the water so now let us have an understanding how water can be a potential source of contaminant so as we are already aware so whenever we are talking about water as a potential source of contaminants so we will have to necessarily classify them into different categories so the first category is natural aquatic so when i say natural aquatic it is the natural waters from the natural bodies so the potential microflora that can be present in case of natural aquatic includes pseudomonas cyanobacteria e coli salmonella shigella as well as vibrio so if the natural aquatic or the natural ponds are contaminated with intestinal microflora we can effectively observe such kind of intestinal microorganisms such as e coli as well as salmonella okay so similarly the next important class that has to be discussed is soil dwelling so when i say soil dwelling it is effectively the wash water so the wash water which consists of the traces of soil and it has entered the natural water body so it potentially has an effective microflora which is from the soil so this includes the bacillus clostridium acinetobacter as well as alkali genes which are the potential carrier from the soil which have sought an entry into the water body okay so next then we have the intestinal microflora so the intestinal microflora proliferation in case of water is effectively observed when the water body is contaminated with the raw sewage water that is the domestic sewage or industrial sewage so they potentially have or they are the carrier of the intestinal microflora such as like coliforms salmonella as well as shigella okay so they are the potential sources of contaminants of water in turn contaminating the food product okay so let us now have an understanding that the kind of microflora in case of water is dependent on these important factors so the three important factors that we have discussed which are the potential sources of contaminants so that depends or that defines the type of microflora that is there in case of uh, na water body okay so as i've already told you escherichia coli which is an intestinal microflora is an indicator microorganism for fecal contamination that means if your food product is having the presence of escherichia coli it means the product has been effectively contaminated with the fecal matrix okay so the water commonly to ensure that the water is sufficiently free from any other kinds of microorganism it has to be ensured that the water is properly chlorinated so the chlorination is a process wherein effectively most of the microorganisms are removed okay so it has to be in place in every other kind of industry as well as at the household level to ensure that the water that is being significantly used for the processing or for washing of the fruits vegetables or any food matrix for that purpose has to have less load of microorganism okay so the not more than 0.2 ppm of chlorination should be found all right 
Now let us understand how air can be a potential source of contamination of the food product. So as I have already told you, air do not harbor any microorganism naturally and therefore it can be a, it cannot be a natural source of contamination of the food matrix. Instead, the dust as well as the dirt particle which are existing in case of the air can be a potential carrier of microorganism. Okay, so one of the important thing that has to be taken into consideration in here is, so the area or the environment in which the food is being processed. So this is significant to the food processing industry. So in case of food processing industry, if the environment is highly contaminated and in that environment the processing of the food is in place, then it can be duly contaminated by the air because the air will eventually carry the dust and dust, dirt particle and also the aerosols which in turn has the biological contaminants. Okay, so the biological contaminants includes the hairs of an animal or the human beings or the processor who is handling the food and also the pollen grains, the algae, the protozoa, bacteria, eastern mold, viruses also. Okay, so these can be the biological contaminants which can persist in air and in turn lead to the contamination of the food matrix. To avoid this particular problem, so what ideally in case of food processing industry is done is they will cre create a barrier which in turn prevents the entry of the contaminated air from outside the food processing plant to the inside of the food processing plant. So how exactly they ensure this? They will install HEPA filters, H-E-P-A. So the HEPA filter stands for High Efficiency Particulatory Filters. Okay, so the HEPA filters stands for high efficiency particulatory air filter. Okay, so what exactly this HEPA filter does? It will create a positive pressure and in turn prevents the entry of the contaminated air from outside the industry to the inside of the industry and also it helps to prevent and it also helps to uh, filter the air which in turn removes every other kinds of dust particle as well as the, uh, um, the microorganism. So HEPA filters are ideally installed at every door. It is used as an air curtain in case of uh, food industry at every door entrance so that in turn prevents the entry of the contaminated air inside the food processing plant okay so that has to be duly taken into consideration okay so the microflora above the irrigated land is less in comparison to the dry land in case of wetland what happens the dust particles are settled because of the damp environment but in case of dry land what happens so since the environment is not damp so there is always a possibility that when there is a whip of air so the dust particle will flow and then in turn it might be present in case of environment okay so similarly the dry air contain more microorganism than the moist air so the moisture will eventually has lower load of microorganism in comparison to the dry air okay so the number of microorganism in air may be reduced under natural condition by sedimentation, sunshine, sunshine, washing by rain or snow. So these are the potential means in which we can naturally curb or avoid the microorganism which are present in case of dust and dirt in which might be present in case of air. Okay. So lastly, the number of microorganism in case of air may be reduced by natural means. So these natural means includes the sedimentation, sunshine and washing by air or snow. So these are the effective means by which the microorganism load can be effectively lowered which are the most natural means. Okay. So next then we have another important source of contaminant that is handling of the food product during uh, processing. Okay. So process 
So next then we have another important source of contaminant that is during handling as well as processing. So what are the possible contaminants which might actually occur during handling as well as processing of the food product. So, so this can be effectively classified into different category that is processing equipment. So the contaminants that are possibly coming from the processing equipment. So if the processing equipment are not properly washed okay so then it can be a potential source of carrier of microorganism also the ingredients that are being used so if the ingredients which are being used of cheap quality or poor quality they can in turn carry a possible source of load of microorganism and also the product to product that is cross contamination so what ideally happens if you are keeping both meat as well as the fruit product so the cut meat as well as the vegetables as well as fruit side by side so there is always a possible source of cross contamination so cross contamination can be a potential carrier of microorganism and the packaging material so the type of packaging material that is being used and how exactly it is being stored will eventually have an influence on the microbial load and eventually the quality and the shelf life of the food product so these are the important categories which has to be duly taken into consideration whenever we are talking about the handling as well as processing of food product so to curb this particular problem and to overcome this particular reason so we will have to have prevention that is the preventive measure includes the cleaning with the help of detergent and sanitation with the help of sanitizer okay and also good hygienic practices and standard operating procedure should be in place okay so this standard operating procedure is nothing but SOP standard operating procedures okay so to give you an example if we have a pasteurizer okay so which is effectively used for pasteurization that is heat treatment of milk as well as fruit juices so we need to have a standard operating procedure for this pasteurized equipment also so as it has to clearly define what are all the different kinds of chemical agents which can in turn be used for sanitizing and cleaning of this particular equipment and also at what interval and also the specific time has to be effectively defined which is only possible when we have a standard operating procedure so standard operating procedure as far as industrial equipment is concerned has to be significantly defined which in turn can help us to reduce the microbial load so similarly we need to have good hygienic practices okay so whenever an individual that is ghp stand for good hygienic practices so that is whenever and a contact with the food product that is who is manufacturing it and handling it and processing it so he or she has to wear a proper good he or she has to properly be dressed that means they need to have a proper clean apron they need to have a proper headgear and also they need to have a mask and they need to have a protective uh, gloves because there is always a possibility of transmission of any kind of a skin microflora and also if a, if a human being is sneezing while he or she is preparing a food then it can be a potential carrier of respiratory microflora also to avoid all of that we need to have ghp in place so there has to be proper implementation of good hygienic practices which effectively take care of any possible contamination that might be occurring to the food product so these are the potential contaminants as far as food product is considered okay to give you an overview of what we have studied in today's class so we have classified food so we have defined spoilage and we have classified food based on the shelf life and also we have studied about different potential sources of contaminants like plant okay so in which we have understood that the natural microorganism which might be present in case of plant includes leuconostoc lactobacilli acetobacter as well as eastern mold which are together called as fungi okay so eastern mold are together called as fungi okay so similarly in case of soil 
we have studied that the natural microflora of soil might include actinomycetes, bacillus, pseudomonas, clostridium as well as fungi. So, in turn they can be a possible source of contamination to the food matrix. So, similarly we have animals. So, in case of animals we can have skin microflora such as like Staphylococcus aureus as well as microcroci while the respiratory microflora includes Staph aureus and Streptococcus pyogenes and also the Mycobacterium tuberculosis and the intestinal microflora which are the possible microflora from gastrointestinal tract includes coliforms such as like E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella as well as Clostridia. So similarly we have understood that how exactly the water supply will have an influence on the contamination of the food matrix. So the water might naturally contain pseudomonas, alkali genes, chromobacteria, flavobacteria and variety of intestinal microflora and the handling and processing of the food will also have an influence on the contamination. So if GO, GHP that is good hygienic practices and standard operating procedures are not in place then there is always a possible of transmission and contamination of specific kind of microorganism in turn leading to the spoilage of the food matrix. So these are the things which we have effectively studied in today's lecture. I hope this lecture towards the sources of contamination is effectively understood by each and every one of you. Thank you very much.